All right, a restaurant owner who is actually happy to see extended jobless benefits formally expire on Monday. For most, the president has talked about renewing them and the federal government working with states to do just that. But between those jobless benefits ending and maybe some of the spikes we've been seeing in COVID cases here reversing, could that turn the picture around on the numbers we saw? They were very disappointing, uh, all 235,000 of those jobs, because we expected about triple that in the month of August. David Bunsen as well, the Bunsen Group founder, CIO. David, ended with you. Between those two developments, uh, you know, benefits, you know, expiring uh, on Monday, uh, and, but perhaps more importantly, th- th- these COVID case spikes we've been seeing easing, if not reversing, is that going to improve the jobs picture? What do you think? Well, I think both factors will, but far more the first. I, I don't think that the COVID data really ended up hurting the jobs much this summer for the simple reason that most Americans insisted upon still living their lives and and partaking in economic activity like free people. So I think the bigger factor that we've struggled with, with this incredibly high amount of job openings and not as many people filling the jobs, were the incentives were screwed up, Neil. The incentives from that federal supplement that was never necessary, that was piling on top of many other transfer payments that had already taken place and highly distorted the labor market. And now in the third and fourth quarter, we'll get to clean some of that up. You know what is interesting, guys? We're going to step away from the pros and cons of the jobless benefit thing. I, I am a little concerned about the fear factor going back to work. But a lot of those folks aren't responding to this. What's going on? I. I think that um, at the end of the day, there is a complete distortion in the market, uh, in the jobs front, based on the fact that we have government programs paying benefits out, and then you have uh, policymakers in certain states that are basically begging people not to bring people back to work. Um, I agree that there is a certain level of fear. You could have had more openings taking place here in New York City, where I am, if it wasn't for some of this. But it's not justified by the data. There's far too many employers that were looking for the excuse to not reopen the office because the higher ups like not coming back in. And so this whole entire thing of people extending their own staycation as long as they can is really quite sad for those at the lower end of the income rung who are bearing the brunt of it. All the restaurants, dry cleaners, coffee shops that do not have the normal level of activity in some of our big cities because other folks are still continuing to work on Zoom in their pajamas. It's really very upsetting. So play it out the rest of the year, David. What are you looking at? Well, um, the problem is that he's wrong about what's best in a free market, because actually culture and collaboration matters. And so companies will end up seeing that to compete at full strength, they need to have people in the office. I think it still does matter that you can mentor young levels of talent. You cannot do that by Zoom. And so the free market will bear out and people will have to get back to the office. And then you actually benefit those at the lower rung that we have been so willing to dismiss those in a position of privilege to say that they actually don't care about the restaurants and the busboys and other blue collar workers. And so ultimately, the free market will bring a solution back to all rungs. But it's been distressing to see those who say they care so much about the lesser privileged for the last 18 months be so willing to dismiss their well-being and then hide behind various conveniences around fear of infection and so forth, where the data has just completely, totally uh, disproven such an idea. I think that I think that by the end of the year, you're going to see a lot of people back in the offices, but it won't be back to 100 percent. And yet um, here in New York City, I think that the financial uh, industry is begging for people to get back. And even though it's taking longer than I would have wanted, and in fact, instead of Labor Day, I think you're going to see more now coming into October. There's still enough old school leadership that understands the benefits of what I said about culture and uh, guys like Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan and Solomon at Goldman Sachs. They're uh, they're holding the line here. And I'm glad for that. And I look forward to where we are in a couple more months.